Welcome to Kaleidoscope Pro from Wildlife Acoustics. Cluster analysis is a powerful tool for sorting through audio files, finding signals of interest, and sorting similar signals into clusters. Once a basic cluster analysis scan has been run, it is then possible to build a simple or advanced classifier which can be used to sort new recordings. Let's explore how to get the best results from each of these steps. The first thing to understand about cluster analysis is that it is a statistical process. In order for Kaleidoscope Pro to create a cluster of detected signals with similar acoustic patterns, there must be enough of these similar detected signals to be statistically significant. To make a simple analogy, if you have a thousand recordings of a dog bark and a single recording of a cat meow, the cat meow is not statistically significant. A cluster cannot be formed from a single vocalization. This is important to understand because if cluster analysis is used on a batch of recordings, the analysis may not find a rare vocalization. If you are looking for that single cat meow in a thousand dog barks, you will probably not find that meow with a basic cluster analysis scan. It's also important to understand that if basic cluster analysis does not produce reliable, high-quality clusters, a simple or advanced classifier will not solve the problem. In order to build a classifier, you do need a statistically significant amount of training data that represents the target vocalization. It's possible to run a basic cluster analysis, and the signal of interest may exist somewhere in the clusters, but it may not be obvious and cleanly clustered. This can happen if there are a statistically significant number of the desired signals, but Kaleidoscope Pro is not focused properly on the desired signal. It's possible to tune Kaleidoscope Pro to look within specific frequency ranges. If you know the frequency range of the signal of interest, you can adjust the minimum and maximum frequencies under the Signal Parameters tab. If you know the length of the desired signal, you can adjust the minimum and maximum times. You can adjust the gap time between syllables to tease apart or glue together complex vocalizations. Under the Cluster Analysis tab, changing the FFT size can also be helpful. A larger FFT window has greater resolution of frequency, which can make a significant difference for low frequency sounds. A smaller FFT window has greater temporal resolution and may be better at defining rapid vocalizations. Here's a simple example. I've done a basic cluster analysis on a batch of recordings. The cluster analysis has no problem finding common songbirds such as cardinals or titmice. I think there are also owls in these recordings, but they don't show up until I'm well down the cluster list, and they are mixed in with many false positives. Let's see if we can do better with these recordings. Because the owl makes a low frequency sound, I'll lower the maximum frequency parameter to 1000 Hz. This will cause Kaleidoscope Pro to ignore any detections above 1000 Hz. I'll also choose the largest FFT size, so Kaleidoscope Pro emphasizes the frequency resolution. Now when I do a cluster analysis scan, I get far fewer clusters, and the owls are better represented within the new clusters. I find my owls in clusters 2, 6, and 7. There are actually very few owl calls in these recordings, but there are just enough to create these three similar clusters. Because this tuned cluster analysis did a better job of finding the owls, I am now more confident about building a classifier to find owls in a new batch of recordings. When Kaleidoscope Pro does a basic cluster analysis batch process, one of the output files is the cluster.kcs file. This file contains the statistical models of the clusters from the scan. The cluster.kcs file is a simple classifier and can be used to sort new recordings. As a convenience, I'll rename clusters 2, 6, and 7 as owls in the results window and then save. This updates the cluster.kcs file with the customized cluster names. Now I'll change Kaleidoscope's input directory to point to a new batch of recordings. These recordings were made at the same deployment site as the first batch of files, but they were recorded a year later. Under the Cluster Analysis tab, I'll choose the option to use the edited cluster.kcs file to sort the new recordings. I'm not concerned about the FFT size or settings under the Signal Parameters tab because the cluster.kcs file contains the settings from the original cluster analysis and will use them for the new recordings. I'll run a cluster analysis scan on the new data using my edited KCS classifier. This batch process does find owls in the new set of recordings 
and you can see the cluster is named as a result of using the previously edited cluster.kcs file. I have the option to build a single classifier that finds multiple species or even different vocalizations from the same species. If I'm looking to find multiple species from the same recordings, but those species have very different characteristics, I may want to create multiple classifiers based on ideal signal parameters and FFT settings for each species of interest. If I look through the new recordings, I see that most of the vocalizations that have been labeled as owls are owls, but there are also a few false positives. If I want to do the work and reduce the number of false positives found by my OWL classifier, I can create an advanced classifier. The advanced classifier will further discriminate what is an OWL and what is not. It's important to understand that, again, if you don't have good results from the original cluster analysis on your training data, the advanced classifier will not work well. I'll go back to the original cluster analysis where I found OWLs in clusters 2, 6, and 7. The first step of building an advanced classifier is to copy the generic cluster names to the manual ID column. I'll then create a button label for owls. Now I will manually label what I know are owls. If I find a false positive in the training data, I can leave it with its generic cluster name to tease that detection away from the owls. The other choice I have is to click on a blank button to leave a blank space in the manual ID column. This removes the detection from being used in the training data at all. I might want to use that if I see a detection that I think is an owl but is poor quality or has other acoustic features I don't want as part of the training data. Once I've completed the manual naming, I'll save the results window and run another cluster analysis on the training data, this time using my manually edited cluster.csv file. This second batch process produces a customized cluster.kcs file that is the advanced classifier. I can now use the advanced classifier to process the new recordings, and the results still isolate the owls in the new data, but this time around there are less false positive identifications in the owl cluster. The lessons to be learned here are the following. Before you even think about building a simple or advanced classifier, you need to be getting reliable results from a basic cluster analysis of the original training recordings. You may have to tune the cluster parameters to get the best results. A simple classifier is a convenience for finding and naming detections in new recordings based on the training data. An advanced classifier is similar to a simple classifier, but is further tuned to reduce false positive detections. Clustering relies on statistical significance. You need enough examples of a vocalization to create the original clusters. And lastly, clustering is based on acoustic patterns. If you create a classifier, it will only work well on new recordings that have similar acoustic patterns to the training data. And this can include environmental noise at the deployment site. In other words, a classifier made from recordings at one deployment site may not work well with recordings made at a different recording site. Thank you for watching.